Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This particular episode is not about fishing. It is about our sister channel, TA Outdoors, which Mike runs together with a fishing one. They're both our channels and they're going pretty well, I have to say. Mike is off the scale with his. I thought, I'd better start checking this out a bit, you know, because we collaborate and we're sort of related, aren't we? But hang on, he's got... I don't know, 850 something, 30,000 subscribers? I need to check this out. So I've taken my little baby camera, I've gone to help them out down in the woods just to see what all this outdoor stuff is about and why it's going mad. Welcome to BTS. Yes, behind the scenes of the Totally Outdoors Viking house build. Let's get down there. You may well have seen Mike's channel. We run the two together, T Outdoors, with his Viking house. It is, I can't tell you the views, he's had over a million views in I think 13 days. That's under two weeks, he's just passed a million views. It's gone crazy. So I'm down here in the woods with Mike and Dustin as a general labourer. Well, at my age, that's about all I'm good for, isn't it? let's face it. I'm gonna be trying to saw up some logs, help them build a bit of a log store, because they're so totally engrossed in building over there that when you get to build the fire, you know, you're going to need some logs, aren't you? So, a bit of hard work for me. I'm going to give the guys a hand, give you maybe some behind the scenes shots of what's going on at the Viking build. Man, it's a big, big building. Well, people, you can see here is a huge woodland area. Well, I can't tell you how many trees are here. A lot of the time you don't need to cut them down here because they have already been cut and felled so we're very lucky in that respect. Let's get over here and I want to show you a really weird saw that they've got. It's got things called a silky. We'll have a look anyway. Right boys, here we are. Ready to rock and roll. I've got the uh, wood suspended across here. But just look at the saw. This is Dustin's saw. It's called a silky katana boy. And it's a, the most weird thing you've ever seen. Obviously it folds up into this sort of sheath there. But it's a saw, the like of which I've never used before. I wish I saw one before because it's very, very good at cutting. It only cuts on the pull stroke with these teeth, which are like lethal there. It cuts on the pull stroke and it's Japanese. You know the Japanese make good things. This thing flies through wood and I mean, they've cut so many bits of log with this, you'd think it'd be blunt. No, it's, it's sharp all the time. So I'm gonna whiz through this piece of wood and start stockpiling something to make a log store for them. Of course, I've got to make sure I don't go through the microphone lead. What do you think? Might be safest just to put that there. So it's the pull stroke only. You can see that one works, definitely. Uh, this one's called a silky, it's a gone boy, it's a smaller one. It locks together like that. We'll just give this one a go. It probably won't be as quick as the other one because it's a much longer blade. And I've started there. I can whiz through it, hopefully, with this one. Well, definitely, it's a shorter blade and the longer blade is much bigger, probably got bigger teeth. It goes through there anyway. The lads have pinched the, uh, the big silky off me. Let's get over there and see what they're doing with it. Gives me a chance to have a breather here as well. I've got a lot to make. And you can see there, mine's got the uh, silky going there. As you can see, 
Well, straight through. No problem. That was probably a minute. That's nice clean cut. It's like it's been done with a chainsaw. Yeah. This is making what, mate? We are making some uh, a, a raised bed. Yeah. But we've got to plank this wood up. Is it for geraniums? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got to plank the wood up. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be time consuming, but it's gonna be worth. And you gonna, how are you gonna how are you gonna split it apart or what? Well, we're gonna we're gonna try and get. So. So this is waste. Oh, I see one of the same And two. Th this would be waste. Two. So we kind of want two planks. From one log. So from we... one log. And that will kind of allow us to have... We might need three, but we can always get another log. We just want to build a raised bed wide enough. So it's, we might need three. We just want it so our shoulders are on the bed and we're not falling off. Gotcha, gotcha. So we want two or three planks out of this, or maybe another one. And that's the idea, really. So I've got the good job with the small logs, luckily boys, I need to get back over there. All that hard work those guys have been doing over there. It's even made me sweat. I'm gonna take my jacket off today. We have got a sawing horse over there that they've made, but I'm going to put a nail in just here, just lightly, so I can drop bits of wood in there, and hopefully, it's not bushcraft, it's not Viking, it's probably Home Depot. But see, I can saw that there. I'm thinking all the way as I go along, so I probably need to go and have a lie down. Now I need to get this raised up, so how about if I... Oh, too old for this crap. If I raise this like that, there we go. Let's just see if that makes it any easier. Probably wants to go up higher, doesn't it? Let's just try it. Oh yeah, a bit easier against the uh, nail there. In fact, much easier. I can rest with my foot there, just to push against that nail. And you just cut with this thing. It's a weird, weird saw. For somebody who's sawn for 50 odd years, and most of that sawing is done using the blade pushing, it is a bit strange pulling. However, You cannot say it doesn't work. Look at that wallop. And here, look guys. There's all the rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I lose it a bit. Nine of the sort of central core there, nine years. 10, 11, would that be 12 years old? The timber have all been cut here. These are like off cuts left over from timbering
What I can see, guys, I'm going to need a nail on the other side as well. This is fat wood, it's like resinous pine wood. So what you're doing, you're just getting uh, shavings off it, yeah? Just shavings, yeah. If you if you smell this... Yeah, it does, yeah. It's just really, it's pine, and you can pine. see it's pine. It's almost rock hard and it's, I don't know, it's maybe 80, 90% of this wood is actually resin. So I'm just taking a few shavings off and if I can land them on my glove. And once I've got a nice little little bundle or a little handful, then I'll use my fire steel, which is on my belt, in my sheath, for my knife, for my knife. And I'll just strike into these shavings. And what'll happen is these shavings will then catch light. And you'll notice when they catch light, the color of the smoke is really dark. It'll be a very dark, maybe black color because of the oils or the resin oh, really? inside yeah. the wood. So um, it's another giveaway for resinous wood is when you see, it's also similar to when you, when you burn silver birch bark, it gives off a very black smoke. Not a smoke you'd want to be downwind of and you, you certainly um, want to be away from it. You don't want to inhale it because it's, it's probably it's not too good for you. It's a starting fire really then, yeah. Use it as a starting medium. Absolutely. And it's just all we need is maybe that much, but to, to be safe and with fire lighting, you always want to gather more than you need. So we're just going to maybe get another half again or maybe double that up so that we've got lots and lots of this resinous wood. And then these are just shavings. We've peeled off the split log. So those logs we're splitting for the bench. And these super dry shavings, we'll just put these onto our small flame. Like kindling then really. Like kindling, exactly. So we would otherwise throw this on the ground and walk all over it to get wet. But actually it saves us from going looking for kindling. Now we have kindling right here. So I'll just carry on and get some more shavings and then I'll get the fire steel out and I'm going to take it to a flame. So I'll just take these shavings off my glove and I'll probably, because this has got a bit of a rock on it, a, a rock as in, as in it, it'll, it'll, um, it'll wobble, I suppose. It'll yeah. wobble. So by putting it on my glove, it'll kind of hold still or steady while I put pressure down with my fire steel and strike down. So actually, in order just to secure it a bit more, it, it, this will probably take a few, a few strikes in order to get, in order to get a flame. And once it goes, it goes up pretty well, it spreads pretty well. And once this is going, if you look at the colour of the smoke, you'll notice, if I don't put it out like that, hold on, ease that off, might have been a bit quick with that one. And eventually this will all go up really nice. It's so away now. So you can see the colour of that smoke already, can you see that? Yeah, it's black, like uh, it's black. tyres or oil. Exactly. And this doesn't burn down too quickly. So now I'm going to take this to the fire pit and I'm going to take some kindling, put it on top. Within five, 10 minutes, we'll have a cup of tea. So the fire pit has been rained on over the last few days while we've not been here. So that's absolutely fine because it will dry out in no time. Now I've just got these, nothing fancy. Just to just lay them on top. You obviously want to start with the smaller bits first and eventually work your way up the larger bits. But there's no rush, there's no rush because this is very slow burning resinous wood. Resinous wood being the, the Maya wood the, or that is also called fat wood. So yeah, I can see, you can hear already when you hear the crackling, you know you're in business. That's when you know your kindling starting to catch light.
not eat. Yeah, before it gets chopped in half. So, how's you going, Mike? Good, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Trying to straighten yeah. up the plank. A lot of banging, a lot of banging going yeah. on here. Straightening up the plank, which you're going to hopefully oh, thanks. tidy up in a bit yeah, as well. Yeah, ruin my wrist on the... Uh, yeah. There's got to be flat both sides, yeah, hopefully. Flat both sides, pretty much. Wow. We've done two, we need one more. It needs to be three, three of these wide, I reckon, for the bed. We're kind of making it up as we go, as we do, always. Three wide, yeah, I suppose you'll be three wide, won't you? Yeah. I'd say three wide, by the time your shoulders are on it. But, you know, we're using what's around us trying to use everything that's around us resources wise these have already been cut down on these cedars but it's, it's a, just ones left over from the timber felling isn't it yeah the guys just left them there for us to to use, to yeah. use and build and we got permission to do it also just getting all the knots off so that the planks can meet together nice and straight so we've got the old school bellows there trying to get a bit of heat into the wood You need to hear that pop and sort of crackle, don't you, Justin, really, to, yeah. to know the wood's hot. Oh, that's good, thank good now. Perfect. And you do it, yeah. Couple minutes. Kettle will be ready. Big they go. Huge. Okay, gloves, fire under the Need some boy of wood. Oh yeah, of course. Hey. Ah, it's turned up on time, there you go. Oh, funny you should, funny should mention the word steak. Open steak. Hey, funny you should mention the word steak. What you do? Funny you should mention it. Come out of there. Watch out. Hey, hey, watch out. 
Amber's just about to eat the whole steak that Dustin's got over there. <laughs> there's one bark over here and there's some bark here, which is what I want. Actually, I'm going to measure over here, folks. I need to measure using a piece of stick exactly how wide I want this little roof to be. No, no Amber. Amber. About there. This is my ruler. This is my bushcraft ruler. So I'm hoping, he says, looking for his my trusty knife here. And like children, does it? Yeah, that looks cool, doesn't it? Eh? Bam! Never grow up, people. It's not fun for growing up. So I'm going to use a bit of bark for roof in there. This bit looks good. I want to start it without a split, so probably about there. Let's leave that. My knife is very sharp. I'm just going to work through this carefully, this bark, without slipping people with a knife. Do not mess, do not, never rush with knives, axes, saws. There's never a rush. Well, we've got some steak being cooked by Dustin and Mike. They've got the steak on the go, the fire's going well now. I'll try and cut this bark. Tell you what, this bark's not as easy to cut as it first appears. Right, I've got several bits of bark. I'm sure not to have enough, but hopefully this is the right width to go over the log store. Just like this. Put that around that way. And then we're going to just put a piece of wood on top of this to uh, help hold it down as well. So what we're going to do people is you're going to put one piece of wood across the top of that like that, it hold it in position and that wind won't blow it off. Dustin's just about to put the Michelin star restaurants out of business. <laughs> They'll be coming to me soon for training days. They will be. There we go. That should just flip it up. Beautiful, what a job. What a job. A little bit iffy on that side, but there you go. I'll keep the worst of the rain off and over here, check this out people. What do you call that pan, um, Mr. Petra? This is a, it's a pan made by Petra Max, so absolutely brilliant. And um, I think, well, I call it a skillet. I think they're a skillet. So these are pretty much done. We know there's there's more heat on that side because the flame's coming up. Yep. So you can even just push, push it all on to here and then we'll put the steaks over there. Well, the pan's empty here, as you can see, guys. This is what Dustin's cooked. And you think, I come out here with these two reprobates <laughs> ju just so I can get tendonitis from sawing up 52 logs, but I don't, I actually come for the gourmet food. So let's uh, give it a go. So a piece of steak, 
Fingers, it's, it's, it's a finger buffet, isn't it, this really one? <laughs> and, and I've actually washed them, I actually washed them, well, after a fashion. Now, I'm going to try these bits and bobs, a few onions. So what was in that dip, uh, Dustin, because I missed that one? Well, what we have is we have some mayonnaise, and there's some hot paprika. There's also some Texas spices that I have, um, just a little jar, you can find in the shop. Just yeah. mixed, mixed, mixed um, herbs and peppers. But the real secret ingredient, the magic ingredient, is this smoked garlic. I thought it was a snail. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you smell this, it smells in, it smells totally different to um well to a normal. You can still smell it's garlic, but it smells incredible. Yes. Mixing this so they're soft. It's basically been in the fire for about 10-15 minutes, and these bulbs have gone. These cloves have gone nice and soft. Squeeze them into this mix, into the mayonnaise mix, and it gives it that smoked garlic flavour. There we go, guys. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. Gourmet. It is. Gourmet bushcraft for me all the time. It just beats bacon and eggs. So because it's such a big fire pit here, the guys have uh, built, there's another grill here that we've had. We had it down Badger's Rest for those who used to watch our uh, Palat Cabin films. And it should obviously have something resting in there. We can't find it. So it's just a little bit of grill that fills out with a couple of bent over bits here. They could drop over there. But this can go over there. You can see it's not quite wide enough to span it. So we bought some rebar and gonna put a couple of pieces of rebar across there before the kettle boils, one hopes. And um, then it should support it, fingers crossed. Let's go there. I'll try there and not saw my thumb off. So there we go. People just put this over there. That one there. And there is a second grill. Now we take the chain off it later. Put that with them rest over there. Right, that's a second. A second grill. Get that kettle back on here. Get ourselves a brew on. Well, people, we're getting near the end of the day. Mike's over here with the sawing horse, trying to cut some some down. Got quite a lot done today. I'm quite happy with what I've done today. Got the log store built there on the top. Some more logs ready. Some more food left over from the grub. A nice lot of locks here. So that'll be good for the lads for a while. Warm myself up with the axes. And over here is Dustin. He's stripping the bark off to make the roof. Well, you're doing a good job there, Dustin. Yeah. Some bits are easy. Some bits aren't that easy. But it will all come together eventually. Even if we do have lots of strips, well, it's all about overlapping them. Yes. That's what it's all about. But I'm almost there on this one. Just free it up on the bottom. Free that bit up. Bit of a real clear. And then roll this one away. When when he toes. Stay. And there we are. Nice piece of bark for the roof. It's these white bits are so much harder to peel off. Are they still still live? Are they? Still live, yeah. I think it's it's these brown bits where they've been lying on the ground, they've absorbed a lot of moisture, and that's what makes it a lot easier to, to peel. But yeah, that's another one. Add that to the pile. Good job. We'll be doing it by torchlight soon, I should think. Well, people, I know it wasn't a fishing one. It never was going to be a fishing one. But if you do want to see this Viking house that the lads are building, go to Mike's TA Outdoors, check it out. This is like a collaboration one, this one. It's between TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, Bushcraft tools with Dustin. I've enjoyed helping them out, getting some logs, making a little log store. But if you do want to see it, don't forget to hit subscribe button on all three channels now. And who knows what else, where could I turn up? It might not be with a fishing rod next time, guys. It might be one of those long saws because I'm virtually in love with it. The silky saw is for me. We'll see you again in the next film.